Welcome back to TAE certification training series. Today, we are about to start a new chapter in our test automation journey. So far, we have covered a lot from why we automate test to getting ready for its execution and exploring the complexities of a journal test automation framework. Now we are about to dive in something equally important, but different, which is test automation reporting and metrics. In plain terms, this chapter is all about the information and numbers we can gather from our automated test. It is like a dashboard in your car. When you drive, you need to know how fast you are going, how much fuel you have, and whether the engine is working well or not. Similarly, in test automation, we need to keep an eye on various indicators to ensure that everything is on track. We will explore test automation reporting and metrics through four key sections. The first one is 5.1, selection of TAS metrics. This section focuses on choosing the most relevant metrics for your test automation project. Then we have 5.2, implementation of measurement. In this section, you will learn how to put measurement into action and gather valuable data effectively. Next is 5.3, logging of the TAS and the SUT. In this section, you will discover the importance of comprehensive logging in both the TAS and the SUT. And finally, 5.4, test automation reporting. In this section, you will explore how to create informative reports that turn data into actionable insights for your automation efforts. So let's start with section 5.1, selection of TES metrics, and discover how to choose the right metrics to guide your test automation journey. This section focuses on metrics for monitoring the test automation strategy and the effectiveness and efficiency of the TAS. So it's primarily concerned with discussing metrics used to assess and keep track of two main things mentioned over here. The first one is test automation strategy, which is about monitoring how well the planned approach for automating test is working. And the second is effectiveness and efficiency of the TAS. It involves evaluating how effective and efficient the chosen automation strategy is in achieving its intended goals and objectives. Next, we have separate from SUT related metrics used to monitor the system under test and the functional and non-functional testing of the SUT, which is selected by the project's overall test manager. So the key point here is that these automation metrics are distinct and separate from another set of metrics known as SUT related metrics. These SUT related metrics are used to monitor this SUT, which is system under test, which is the software or application which is being tested along with its functional and non-functional aspects. And the responsibility for selecting and managing these SUT related metrics lies with the project's overall test manager. Test automation metrics allow the TAM and TAE to track progress towards the goals for test automation and to monitor the impact of changes made to the test automation solution. On the other hand, the test automation metrics are the domain of the TAM, test automation manager, and the TAE, test automation engineer. These metrics are used to track the progress of the test automation effort and to evaluate how changes made to the test automation solution are impacting its performance. So to summarize, test automation metrics are like the instruments for gauging the efficiency of the automation strategy, while SUT related metrics focus on the quality and performance of the software being tested. Each set of metrics serves a distinct purpose and is managed by different roles within the testing team. Next, we have TAS metrics, and there are two of them, external and internal. So the external TAS metrics are used to measure the TAS impact on other activities, in particular, the testing activities, and the internal one used to measure the effectiveness and efficiency of the TAS in fulfilling its objectives. Think of it this way. External metrics show how your TAS affects the bigger picture of testing, while internal metrics tell you how well the TAS is doing its job. 
it's like looking at both the forest and the trees to understand the whole picture so let's have a look at all the external tas metrics over here and then later on we will go through all of them one by one in detail so the first one is automation benefits number two effort to build automated test three effort to analyze automated test incidents, four, effort to maintain automated tests, five, ratio of failures to defects, six, time to execute automated tests, seven, number of automated test cases, eight, number of pass and fail results, nine, number of false fail and false pass results, and number 10 code coverage and similarly we have a list of internal TES metrics too the first one is tool scripting metrics number two automation code defect density and the third one speed and efficiency of TES components let's now have a look uh, at all the external TES metrics one by one and the first one is automation benefits why major automation benefits it is particularly important to measure and report the benefits of a TAS. This is because the costs in terms of the number of people involved over a given period of time are easy to see. People working outside testing will be able to form an impression of the overall cost but may not see the benefits achieved. Think of your TAS as a toolkit you have carefully assembled. You have put in time and effort to make it work seamlessly. Now it's time to reveal the real treasures hidden within this toolkit, which is the benefits of test automation. Now here's the deal. While it's quite clear how much effort and resources go into setting up testing automation, like the time and people involved, the benefits might not be immediately visible to everyone, especially uh, those who are not directly involved in the process. That's why we need to shine a light on these benefits, making them crystal clear for everyone to see. Benefits depend on TAS objectives. Any measure of benefit will depend on the objective of the TAS. Typically, this may be a savings of time or effort, an increase in the amount of testing performed, breadth or depth of coverage, or frequency of execution, or some other advantage such as increased repeatability, greater use of resources, or fewer manual errors. So the reward you reap from your TES depend on what you aimed to achieve in the first place. Did you set out to save time, enhance testing coverage, or reduce errors? The benefits align with your original goals. Possible measures include efficiency gains, number of hours of manual test effort saved. So count the hours saved by automating test compared to manual testing efforts. Streamlined regression testing, reduction in time to perform regression testing. So highlight how much faster regression testing becomes with automation. Enhanced test execution, number of additional cycles of test execution achieved. Track how many additional testing cycles you can execute thanks to automation. Expanded testing scope, number or percentage of additional test executed. Measure the extra test you can perform due to automation. Test automation ratio. Percentage of automated test cases related to the entire set of test cases, although automated cannot easily be compared to manual test cases. Okay, imagine you have a group of test cases. Some of these test cases are automated while others are manual. Now, you want to know what portion of your total testing effort is done through automated test cases from a pool that includes both automated and manual test. However, here is the catch. Automated and manual test cases are like apples and oranges. They serve different purposes and are used in different situations. So directly comparing them is not straightforward. So while you can calculate this percentage, 
to understand the balance between automated and manual testing in your process, remember that it doesn't tell you which is better or more effective. It's a simple way to see how you are using these two types of testing methods. Then we have coverage amplification. Increase in coverage, requirements, functionality, structural. So assess the broader coverage you achieve, whether it's related to requirements, functionality, or structural aspects. Then we have early defect detection. Number of defects found earlier because of the TAS. When the average benefit of defects found earlier is known, this can be calculated to a sum of prevented costs. So calculate the cost savings by finding defects earlier in the development process, thanks again to automation. Then we have unique defect discovery. Number of defects found because of the TAS which would not have been found by manual testing. For example, reliability defects. In this one, identify defects uh, uncovered solely because of automation, which might have been missed in manual testing. Additional consideration. Note that test automation generally saves manual test effort. This effort can be devoted to under, uh, other kinds of manual testing, for example, exploratory testing. Defects found by these additional tests can also be seen as indirect benefits of the TAS, as the test automation enabled these manual tests to be executed. Without the TAS, these tests would not have been executed and subsequently the additional defects would not have been found. Here is the exciting twist. Test automation not only saves time and effort, but also opens up opportunities for more comprehensive testing and deeper exploration. It's like having a versatile toolkit that allows you to explore different testing scenarios and uncover issues that might have otherwise stayed hidden. In the end, measuring the benefits of test automation is like revealing the true value of your testing efforts. It's about acknowledging the efficiency accuracy and agility it brings to your testing process and inspire you to continue leveraging its potential for even more impressive outcomes. This concludes today's session. We will continue exploring the remaining TS metrics in our next session. Until then, take care.